Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi and today we're talking about a whole slew of new products. We have the Current Body LED Skin Eye Mask, we have Tom Ford Hazy Sensuality, we have a new lipstick by Armani, a new to me blush from Valentino, we have some new Japanese makeup brushes. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start off with the LED eye mask. Now I have to say, uh, this was gifted to me. I saw it available in Europe and I had emailed them asking when it was gonna be available in the US and uh, then after that, they, they did offer to send it to me. So I accepted it and this is it. So I do have the current body face mask, which I love and use. And then the one thing about the face mask is it doesn't really get that 11s area, which I, I frown a lot. So I always get the little 11s lines and this mask I have been using for several months now. And you know, it's really, I think it's been making a difference. So I do have a before and a current day shot. So you can see this. Now this is recommended to use about like five times a week. It's a three minute long mask, but I have to say I'm not great about using it as often as I should, which doesn't really make sense because usually I just put this on and brush my teeth. You know, it's the same amount of time, but here's the mask. You can see inside you have all of the different like LED lights here and so forth. This is a silicone here. You have the on off switch here. So that's gonna light up. It does come with goggles that you can use to cover your eyes if you'd like. Again, as I mentioned, I usually just wash my face and put this on and brush my teeth and so forth. So there is an elastic adjustable strap here as well. And I have makeup on right now, so I don't wanna do too much, but that's it and then I just let that sit and then it'll shut off automatically after three minutes but you can also just hold the button down for a few seconds and it will turn off as well. It does have a nice little charger that it hooks into. Let's take a look at those before and after shots while I talk a little bit about the specs on this. So according to Current Body, this will improve fine lines and wrinkles. They have four clinically proven LED wavelengths to target elasticity, dark circles, and eye bags. It's hands-free. Again, it just takes three minutes. You have 80 professional strength LED bulbs. You can use their hydrogel eye mask with this underneath to kind of enhance that. I've actually been using the Autour um, the toner, the spray toner, and I put that on first. I actually just ran out of that, so I'm using the Retrave, uh chamomile toning essence or whatever it's called now. So they're recommending actually six times per week to see results in as little as eight months. Again, I've probably been doing about four times a week and I'm seeing results. <laughs> so to say I really like it. It did win Cosmopolitan's Best Skin Innovation of 2022. And it just became available here in the US at the beginning of 2023. So this is supposed to target the eye crow's feet, the 11 lines, eye bags, dark circles. It's supposed to firm, plump, and add elasticity. And again, you've got four different LED wavelengths to hit the deeper layers of skin. So you are increasing collagen production and kickstarting skin healing and so forth. So I think this is a great device. And the fact that it's only three minutes makes me way more likely to use this than other products. So this is definitely something I'm going to continue with. I think it is fantastic. I really like it. I do feel like I notice a difference. I'd love to know your thoughts when you're looking at this. And I have to say, when I use it more frequently, I definitely see more of a difference. So as with any sort of LED treatment, you're going to see a difference if you use it consistently on a regular basis. But once you stop, you know, those results, they're not permanent. You know, that this is... It's something that's going to have to be ongoing, just like if you were to get like Botox or something, you know, that's gonna last for a little while and then you need more. I personally just, you know, I'm, <laughs> I, I, I don't do any other treatments. So for me, I think this is fantastic. I love the ease of use. It is so comfortable to wear and you know, I love the fact that it's hands-free and only three minutes. So for me, this is a no-brainer. Now we do have a new offer coming from Current Body that I wanted to share with you. So from the 18th to the 25th of April on the Current Body website, they are offering 20% off the Ultimate Face and Eye Care Kit. 
So that's going to bring it down from $629 to $503 with 20 cents. You can use the code Lexi to get that price. And you know, that's the face mask that I use and then the LED eye mask together. So I think it's a really great deal if you've been in the market for something like this. Even if you already have an LED face mask, you know, definitely consider the eye mask. I have to say, I definitely reach for the eye mask more than the entire face mask because of the fact that it's only three minutes and it's just so easy to use. Whereas the full face one, also easy to use, but I do, typically try to like sit down or lie down with that one. And with the eye mask, I just kind of continue with my normal activities, putting the kids to bed, brushing my teeth, things like that. So let's go ahead and move on to the next item. Let's move on to the Tom Ford eye palette. So Tom Ford released three new eyeshadow palettes. I have heard that these are permanent but I can't guarantee that. You know, with Tom Ford, honestly, you never know. They are terrible about announcing their products or when they're going to be available. They just kind of show up and sometimes they can be really hard to get. Other times they end up sticking around for a while. So this one is Hazy Sensuality and it's number 42. This is your wet dry formula. And I have to say, this really reminds me a bit of New Dip with a pink. So let's go ahead and do some arm swatches. Then we will talk a little bit about this while we look at some eye, eye looks here. So these are the four shades. And you can see that our top two shades here are going to be very light. You do have kind of that frosty finish. This is kind of a soft taupe champagne versus a soft peach. Then we have this pink. You can see it's going to be a rosy pink. There is a little bit of warmth in there. And then we have a neutral brown leans a little bit cool. So these are the four shades. Let's take a look at those wet as well. So here are the four shades wet and let's just see how much more of a pigmentation difference. You can see they get deeper, but one of the things I noticed about this particular quad, because I have used it wet and dry, although the pigmentation is deeper wet, it's not as significant of a difference as it is with some of the other wet dry palettes. So you can see, you know, the, there is definitely a difference. It's just not a huge difference. So let's talk a little bit about this while we look at the eye looks. The Tom Ford eyeshadow quads relatively recently had a price increase. So they now retail for 90 US dollars. This is in the permanent color packaging. And so that's the brown and the gold. We have a mirror inside and it does come with two utensils. This is made in Italy. We have a one year shelf life and we have six grams of product. Again, this is gonna be your wet dry formula, which means that you are able to use this both wet and dry with great results. And I have to say the formula is still one of my favorites. I do really like their wet dry formula. One thing to note, these shades are all going to be you know, the two lighter shades are definitely going to give you more of that frosty appearance, but you're going to have a bit of a sheen with all four of the shades regardless. So none of these are going to be like a true matte. They're all going to be satin, whereas the two lightest actually are more of a satin shimmer. Now, as for the two lighter shades, when you see them on the eyes, they are slightly similar. You know, obviously that first shade is gonna be slightly cooler in tone than the second shade in the palette, which is a little bit peachier. And then we go to kind of like that medium pink and um, medium to deepish brown. So I do kind of wish that there, you know, I, I would have preferred to have some sort of like matte shade kind of mixed in there, kind of in between some of those tones because the two lightest ones are pretty equivalent. So they don't look super different on the eyes. You definitely can see like that one's a little cooler and one's a little bit warmer, but the the depth of color is going to be equivalent. And you know, because they are both lighter shades, you're not going to detect a huge difference on the eyes with those because they are still fairly similar. I have to say though, I do really like this palette. I think it's a very nice palette. It's great for every day. You can also like kind of glam it up. And you know, I wasn't sure about the pink. I actually really do like the pink one in here. Um, however, you know, 
I think my three favorites are still going to be the more neutral shades because I'm just not a huge pink eyeshadow lover, but I really wanted the accent color in here and I do like that. The pink kind of reminded me of Honeymoon, so we're going to take a look at those. And uh, as before we do that though, just want to talk a little bit about using this wet versus dry. And as I mentioned during the arm swatches, you know, your wet pigmentation is not going to be majorly different than the dry pigmentation. That's not always true for these wet dry palettes from Tom Ford. Sometimes there is a major difference, such as the uh, the palette, the denim palette, the blue denim that came out was that a year ago or a year and a half to two years ago. That one is super, super light until you make it wet. And that's just not really the case with this. So I don't feel like you need to worry about using this wet unless you really want to, um, but it's just, it's not gonna be a major difference. Performance wise, they perform super well. I don't get creasing with this either wet or dry and I think it's a really nice palette. So to say to me, this is kind of like a, an updated, more modern version of Nude Dip. So let's go ahead and take a look at some comparisons. So we're just gonna take a look at a few key comparisons. This is Nude Dip and here is Hazy Sensuality. Nude Dip is a classic from Tom Ford. I think this was the first eyeshadow palette I bought from Tom Ford actually, the, the new dip shade, and I love it. You can see it's gonna be a little bit cooler, a little bit more like silvery in tone. And again, we've got kind of like these two lighter shades. However, you can see that there's a little bit more depth to the second shade compared to the first shade. I feel like it's a, a bigger difference than what you get in Hazy Sensuality, but we have kind of like this soft, more pale gold champagne and a more peachy shade. You can see that this peachier shade though still has a touch of rose in it. So it's kind of, you know, kind of like a rosier version of an in-between shade there for the two lighter ones. And then we have a taupe. So this is gonna be a soft, you know, more brown-based taupe, but you definitely have those silvery accents. And then we have a cooler brown, which you can see is gonna be even cooler than that in Hazy Sensuality, which is really more neutral. So nude dip compared to Hazy Sensuality, Again, I feel like the majority of the shades are fairly similar, but we do have that introduction of the pink and that reminded me of Honeymoon, so let's take a look at that. So this one here is Honeymoon and you can see right off the bat which pink I'm talking about. This one here really made me think of the pink in Hazy Sensuality. They are not gonna be the same, but it did kind of you know make me think of it. You can see that Honeymoon has a little bit more red and it's gonna be a little bit warmer. Is sl it's a deeper shade as well, but it definitely has that similarity. So if you have Honeymoon and New Dip, I feel like you're gonna be able to create equivalent looks, you know, just with those two palettes. If, you know, if you don't have either, Hazy Sensuality might be a great idea, but if you do have both of those already, it's a little redundant. Now, I did also have a request to compare Hazy Sensuality with the Chantecaille Wild Meadows palette. So this is the spring palette that came out from Chantecaille. And you know, you can find this on sale at places like Skin Store has this on sale and so forth. So it's a pretty pricey palette. You can see how small these shades are. However, you know, buying it on sale might might not be a bad idea. It's got a really pretty taupe in here. You can see color wise, we do have kind of this soft pale gold. Let's go ahead and put this down here. And then we have more of this like soft rosier pink. That's gonna be a bit more matte. It's more of a satin matte. And then this taupe isn't really like any of those, but it is more similar to that in Nude Dip. So it's more similar to the third shade in Nude Dip, but not really in Hazy Sensuality. This deeper brown, however, is going to be pretty close to the deepest shade in Hazy Sensuality. So, you know, you've got some similarities there. Now, as you can see in the Tom Ford eye looks, I was using some new to me brushes. These are from What's Up Beauty, and that is a new to me brand. I had not heard of them. However, they are in California. They have a brick and mortar store as well, and they also ship to a wide variety of countries. Now, they reached out, these were sent to me. They also gifted me their eyeshadow palette and some nail polishes, which I've been testing now. To say, I do really like their eyeshadow palette. I mean, this one here is called Geodes and I believe there's another color story as well. 
I really like this one. I've only worn it a couple times so far, but it's really pretty, you know. I I think it's really nice. And one of the things that drew me into this brand is the fact that these brushes are made in Japan. They are, you know, not cut. They are hand-placed bristles. You know, we've got undyed goat hair here. And there are a couple that have some synthetic fibers mixed in. So some of their smaller brushes like this one here have some synthetic fibers mixed in, but for the most part, these are all gonna be undyed, uncut goat hair. These are hand placed, made in Japan. And I have to say they're really nice. One of the great things about these are the size options. So if you really like Sonia G and Refer brushes, but maybe you've had a hard time finding some smaller brushes that you know fit your needs, you might find them here. So what's up beauty? They had they already had you know a line of some of these eye brushes and then they just released six new brushes. So let's just take a quick look at their brush line in general and let me just show you what they've got. So these are the four crease brushes that they have. We have R104, which is the largest, followed by R103, R102, and then R108. This is one of the newest ones. So you can see that these all kind of, you know, have a tapered edge here. However, the R108 is gonna be a little bit flatter at the top, and we have a variety of sizes here. So let's just take a quick comparison. These here are the refer 15, 14, and 13. My 16 uh, is being washed right now, but you can see that the shape here is gonna be a little bit different. Notice how this kind of comes up a little bit more of a pyramidal shape. R13 is also gonna be kind of a flat edge like the R108. So those are going to be similar there. Uh, our 15 you can see is going to be shorter than the R104. It's about the same length as the R103. Just separate those. But you can see that overall, this is gonna be a larger diameter. It's gonna be a little bit of a fluffier brush, whereas this will stay together just a little bit more. Just another comparison, this is the Sony G Crease Pro. And I want to compare that to the R103. You can see that the Crease Pro is gonna be a little bit shorter. We do have a similar shape. However, this is gonna be just slightly larger overall, like in, in diameter, than the R103. So making this one a little bit fluffier, whereas this one will stay compact a little bit more. And then last up, this is the Hakuhodo J5529. You can see that these are going to be pretty, pretty close. They're almost identical there. So overall, I have to say I, I like their crease brushes. They've got some great sizes here. And the sizes can be similar to ones that you might already have, but what really blew me away were the sizes they have in the shader brushes. So these are the four shader sizes they have. This one here is the R105. This looks very similar to the Sonia G Soft Shader, the Worker Pro. And then we have these three smaller ones. You can see that these are going to be a little bit more, you know, they're gonna stay, you know, kind of you know, kind of in place, they're not as fluffy. And we definitely go with some smaller sizes. So let's take a few quick comparisons of these. All right, so in the middle here, we have the What's Up Beauty and R105. This is the Sonia G Soft Shader, and this is the Worker Pro. You can see that the shape is gonna be similar for all of them, but the R105 is gonna be a little bit larger than both, both options from Sonia G. However, you can see that the width here the What's Up Beauty is actually gonna be slightly more pinched. So the soft shader is definitely gonna be a little bit thicker and so forth. So the R105 will be a little bit fluffier and you could even use this one in the crease. So here is the Refer 01. You can see that the shape is gonna, it curves just a little bit more. There's a little more curvature, but the brush heads are gonna be similar in size and shape. The Refer is slightly wider here and this is What's Up Beauty R106. My closest match to that is the Refer 02. But you can see that the Refer 02 is more of a flat top. And it's also gonna be a little bit wider there. So here's the Refer. You can see how that kind of flows on the skin versus the What's Up Beauty. You have a little bit of a longer area here. Really kind of swipes some color on. This works really well with like wet cream shadows and so forth as well. And this is one of the Tansado brushes. I wanted to compare that to it. You can see it's gonna be a little bit smaller here. 
And let's bring in the next size down in What's Up Beauty. This is R110. And you can see that this is going to be a little bit more narrow in both directions. It's also going to be a little bit longer here. So here's the Tansedo. You can see how that goes. And you can see that the curvature, you know, it's going to be the same curvature, but because this is going to be a little bit more narrow, we it's a little bit more pronounced, whereas we go a little bit flatter on top with the Tansedo. Now my closest match actually to this is the Ruffer in 28. You can see that the Ruffer 28 is ever so slightly taller, but otherwise they are pretty darn close. So very, very close. And then this is What's Up Beauty R111. So this is, I don't actually have a brush quite like this. My closest is the Sonia G Flat Definer, but you can see that this is gonna be wider. It's also a little bit more rounded and it's a little bit thicker here as well. So, you know, here's the flat definer, but look at this. I mean, this is great for precision work or getting really into the corner. You know, it's just, it's such a great brush. And this, you know, to me, th this is definitely worth getting because there are not too many small brushes, you know, like this in this shape, uh, in the natural hair that I have at least. So I think this is a really great brush. I would definitely recommend this. I really like this one. Again, it's goat hair, so you've got, you know, uses for powder, creams, liquids, and so forth. And then next up, we have the pencil brushes. So we have R109 is this larger one, R107 is here in the middle, and then R101. And, you know, at first glance, these might be like, oh, okay, it's a pencil brush. I'm sure I have something quite like it. And you might. However, let me go through what my closest ones are. And we're going to start off with the Refer 03 with the R101. You can see that they are going to be similar in size. The Refer, you know, the, you can see that the taper starts lower on the What's Up Beauty. So this is going to be a little bit more pointed, a little bit more precise. Whereas the Refer is just gonna be a little bit larger overall. This will give you a more smudged look, whereas you can get more precision with the R101. And then this one's dirty here, but this is the Sonia G Pencil One, the one that's dirty, and then the Pencil Pro. And then we have the Refer 26 here. So you can see that these shapes are going to be fairly similar. But when you look at the What's Up Beauty, it looks like our Refer is going to be, so Refer 26 is closest to the R109 from What's Up Beauty. So these are gonna be fairly close. However, you can see the Refer actually has a little bit more of a point. This is gonna be a little bit more blunt on What's Up Beauty. So those are gonna be fairly close. But taking a look at these other brushes here, you know, the Pencil Pro is more flattened at the top. The pencil one definitely comes to more of a point, but you can see that these are definitely gonna be wider overall. And the pencil one is going to be shorter. Pencil Pro is a little bit shorter too. So, you know, d some differences, but you know, they are going to perform fairly similarly. And last up, we have the What's Up Beauty in R112. My closest match to this is the Refer 29. You can see that they are similar. The What's Up Beauty is a little bit thicker. The Refer is gonna be a little bit shorter. They're both gonna be a flat top. So the Refer will be a little bit stiffer because it has those shorter fibers. However, I have to say this is pretty stiff as well. So, you know, just a slight difference there. They're gonna be very close. My next closest is the Omnia Gold in the brow definer. So this is BOM 49. You can see that this is going to be shorter. It's about the same, you know, width and dimensions aside from this being shorter. So this brush here, the R112, you could definitely use this for brows as well. I personally like these for eyeliner, but you know, overall I have to say that the What's Up Beauty brushes I think are really nice. Definitely worth looking into. I love how they have some of these smaller size options. Now, moving on, 
I just wanted to share with you this fragrance I just bought because the bottle is so incredibly beautiful. If somebody's looking for like a present, a gift for somebody, this, you know, if you're looking for an expensive gift, <laughs> this is, in my opinion, a, a nice, a really nice one. So it did come with a plastic sleeve on the top. It comes in this box. My box was actually um, kind of broken inside, you can see here, but I mean, look at this bottle. So this was a blind buy for me. I just, I couldn't resist. There are two versions of this bottle. So this one retails for $460. This is the most expensive fragrance I have ever purchased personally. Cause again, I'm not a huge fragrance person, um, but there is a $700 version of this where you get like Swarovski crystals kind of outlining these flowers here. But I just thought this was so pretty. And I did, you know, use a 20% off coupon at Saks for this. If you're interested in doing something like that, definitely add your stuff to your cart. Make sure you're logged into your account and just let it sit. And then eventually you'll get you'll get an email with some sort of discount. You know, sometimes it's 15, 20. I never get the 25%, but I've heard of other people getting those. So Anyway, I just wanted to share this with you because it's so gorgeous and it was a blind buy for me, but I actually really like it. So this fragrance is called New York Flowers and according to bond number nine, it's honoring not just the democracy of the city's public botanicals, but also celebrates the spirit of joy, renewal, and the natural wonders that each spring brings to our town. And it says, you know, a celebratory scent that opens with sparkling notes, almost like popping the cork off a bottle of champagne. And the Swarovski crystal bottle, that one is limited edition. I believe that the version that I bought, purchased, you know, was, is a permanent version. So your top notes here are Anjou Pear, Clementine, Cure Royale, Accord. Middle notes are Rose de Grasse and Jasmine. Bottom notes are Amber and Iris. And for me, I really smell a bit more of, you know, it, it's a little bit of a fruity floral, you know? So you, I can definitely smell the, the actual pear there and I can smell, you know, some rose fragrance. And that's kind of what it smells like to me. And that, that's the type of scent that I typically, you know, prefer kind of like fruity florals or light citrusy scents and things like that. So overall, I think this is really great. If you are, if you love the bottle, definitely, you know, I wouldn't recommend blind buying unless you're super familiar with fragrances, but I definitely think it's worth looking at when you see it in the store. By the way, the longevity of this fragrance, it will fade throughout the day, but I have to say for me, it does last all day. So if I put this on in the morning, I can smell it all day. And as it dries down, it gets a little bit sweeter. This is not gonna be an overwhelmingly sweet scent. Uh, I think it has kind of a soft sweetness to it. So I personally really like that. Let's go ahead and move on to the Valentina blush. So I just wanted to share this one quickly. I really like the Valentino blush formula. This has kind of um, a gel powder formula. This is shade number nine, Poudre. And let's just go ahead. We're gonna put this right up here at the top. You can see that this is gonna be a soft peach. It goes on very nicely. It has almost like a wet gel-like texture if you touch it, but it, you know, it pats on beautifully, it blends out beautifully. I think it's just a really beautiful blush. So I just wanted to share this particular shade with you guys. We have 3.6 grams of product. It has a two year shelf life. These are made in France. Packaging, I don't love Valentino packaging personally, but we do have a mirror here. And then inside in this little hinge area is a little blush brush. So I think that is, that's a cute feature there. So just wanted to share that one with you guys and you can see it's definitely gonna be kind of this like true peach. Now a quick comparison, this is Surat Parfait. This is going to be a little bit more pink. This is Surat Peau de Peche and this one's gonna be actually a little bit more of that orangey peach. And then this, this is Hermes number 19 Rose Apricot. And just put that one right up there. You can see this is gonna be a little bit lighter version of a peach. So those are just some quick comparisons. Let's move on. To so the Pat McGrath bronzer is now available at Sephora. However, they don't have all of the shades. I picked up the shade Nude Honey, which is described as you know the, a neutral shade here. And it definitely looks cooler in the photos than the other shades. 
We actually have 9.5 grams of product and 18 month shelf life on here. And it is made in Italy. I have to say, I do really like this bronzer. I think this is a nice bronzer. So let me go ahead. Let's just I'll put it right here. So here's nude honey. Let me just make that a slightly better swatch there. You can see that it's definitely not going to be as warm as, as yellowy orange as some bronzers. Let's do a few quick comparisons. This is the new Hermes in 01 to Tori. And this is a little bit, you can see it's got a little bit more of that golden hue to it. So the Hermes is going to be warmer in tone. Formula wise, I still think the Hermes is a better formula. I think the Hermes is probably like one of the best bronzer formulas. It's so nice. However, color range is a little lacking. I think the Pat McGrath bronzer shade is really great. So it's actually moved up into my number two bronzer spot. Number one being Gucci. So let's take a look at that one. So here's the Gucci bronzer in 01. And you can see just looking at this that there's gonna be a little bit more red in the Gucci. Let's put that right next to it. So the Gucci is still gonna be a little bit cooler, but you can see how close that Pat McGrath is. It's truly going to be a you know neutral shade bronzer. And it's got it has just a little bit more of that neutral brown in it. I really like it. It's almost like a bronzer contour shade, depending on your skin tone. For me, I like it as a bronzer uh, or even a bronzer, but you know, I can see with certain skin tones how this would be a nice contour shade for people who have warmer skin tones. And then let's just take a quick look at Tom Ford Terra because this one is another, you know, cooler toned bronzer shade. Let me actually put that right up against, put that right up here at the top. You can see that Nude Honey is still gonna be a little bit warmer, a little bit more neutral than the Tom Ford Terra, which is gonna be a little bit cooler. You can see that Gucci is the rosiest, followed by Tom Ford, then Pat McGrath, and then definitely the Hermes is gonna be the warmest out of these. So let's take a look at a couple of demos of this bronzer so you can really see how it looks on the face. And you know, I have to say I'm really enjoying this. I'm not a huge bronzer person. I don't wear it on a daily basis, but this is one that I keep reaching for. So this and the Gucci, I, and I still love the Tom Ford Terra as well. Those are kind of my top three with the best shades, but the Pat McGrath, you know, it has this nice velvety formula. It's similar to her blushes. It just goes on nicely. You can either get a very soft layer, you can build it up, you know. I just think it's a really nice formula. And I think her color range is great on this. So again, this is available at Sephora now, but there are gonna be certain shades that are only available on the Pat McGrath website. I have to say though, like I was not super excited for bronzers, uh, but I really like this. So for me, I prefer this over the Hermes because of the color and I just, I think she really did a great job with this launch. So if you've tried this, let me know. I'd love to know your thoughts. And last up, we have a new lipstick from Armani. This is in the Lip Power line. And Armani recently released a variety of new lipstick shades, but different countries got different shades. So this is 113. It's not available in the US. However, it is available on Selfridges. So I purchased it on Selfridges. And it is available in Canada, I know, as well. And you can see it's just a really pretty, you know, kind of plum berry shade. So I really wanted to try that. And yeah, I think it's a gorgeous shade. Now, this is the Sisley in number 200, Rose Zanzibar. And I just put that one right there. You can see this is gonna be a little bit more pink. And this one is Tom Ford in Sugar Glider, which you can see is gonna be still a little bit more purple. A little more mauve in there. So I hope all of this was helpful. Just a quick rundown of everything that we have here today. We have the Current Body LED Mask. Again, they have a promotion going on for the LED mask and the face mask. Use the code Lexi, get 20% off of the duo. And I really like the eye mask. Moving on, we also have the Bond Number no. 9 New York Flowers fragrance, which I mean, just a stunning bottle. And, you know, I personally really like this particular fragrance. So I think it's a really, really nice luxe purchase, a luxe gift for somebody. 
And then we also have, I'm not going in order here, but we have the Pat McGrath Bronzer and Nude Honey. Really, really enjoying this one. We have the Valentino Blush in Pudra. This is a nice peach. You know, it's this one right here in the middle. So it's kind of a nude peach. You've got a little bit of brown in there. The Armani Lip Power in 113. We just talked about this one here in the middle. Really love this shade. It's a little bit, a little cool, but not too cool. And then of course we have the Tom Ford in Hazy Sensuality. And I think this is a nice palette, kind of a mashup of Nude Dip and Honeymoon a bit. So if you have both of those, it's not necessary, but I do think it's a nice, you know, modern twist on Nude Dip. The What's Up Beauty brushes, I have to say, I really like these. The quality is great. You're looking at quality that's kind of around, you know, ref or Sonia, Sonia G levels. So in summation, I have to say, everything featured here today was very nice. Everything here was solid in performance and color and texture and so forth. So thank you again to Current Body and What's Up Beauty for sending me those items. I really appreciate it. And yeah, I would love to know which items here interest you, if you've tried any of these, what your thoughts are, and let me know down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you very soon. Have a wonderful day.